These are confessions of an office supply junkie. You know, just when you think you're cured, along comes the Christmas season and I fell right back into it. I got two more items to show you. Well, it was a couple weeks before Christmas and I made the mistake of driving down Manal Boulevard near Wyoming and Albuquerque. I saw a pen and pad stationery store. I went in and I came back with these two items that I convinced my wife to wrap for my Christmas presents. I think she's an enabler of my addiction. Let's talk about this one. This is a Retro 51 pin. It's a rollerball pin with a pin and pad themed uh, vintage balloon flight logos. And I like the packaging, first of all. Um, there is their logo right there. And so we open up the package and we have a cool vintage rollerball set with balloon flight logo, airships and balloons, and an antique bronze base that you turn in order to advance the cartridge. Pretty cool, huh? And as you probably know, Albuquerque has uh, a long-standing tradition of lighter-than-air flight, so it was kind of a natural uh, decision to, uh, to get this. And, oh, I really like the retro-style advertising uh, artwork on the inside of the little booklet that comes with the rollerball pin. And their logo on the back is, Life is too short to carry an ugly pin. How cool is that? But is it an ugly pin? Is it an ugly writer or a good writer? It is a great writer. This thing has a really nice rollerball cartridge. You know, I haven't really used too many rollerballs in recent years. I've gravitated more to fountain pins and Bic crystal ball points. Um, but this thing really does write nice. The tip of it has a very nice um, brushed bronze kind of a texture to it. There's kind of brushwork on that kind of a spiral diagonal look to it and it really is a nice looking pen, a nice heavy weight to it. This is uh, not a pen that you would take uh, with you every day necessarily but it's a nice pen to have with you at your desk or your office or to carry it in a nice, uh, nice suit or nice shirt for special occasions and even the bottom of the uh, of the container is a really good place to store it on your desk just like that almost like a pen holder pretty cool now I gotta say regarding the retro 51 rollerball um, I'm probably gonna have to start using it more before I really feel like it's um, it's a favored writing instrument only because I really haven't gotten much into the swing of writing with rollerball pins. I know they've been out there for years. I know that there are a lot of fine, inexpensive cartridges made, but um, I just don't have it yet for rollerballs, and I'm hoping that the elegance and the, the retro design of this, this particular uh, model right here will, will kind of get me liking rollerballs better. You know? make sure to uh, keep you uh, informed about how my little rollerball adventure goes. Now, believe it or not, but some of my office supply purchases are borderline, maybe frivolous and spontaneous. I think it was kind of almost that way with the balloon Retro 51 uh, rollerball pin, but this other item I, I really was uh, lusting after for a long time. And this is the One Touch Stylus 9 Stylus 9 Function Tool Pin. And it is, uh, I've been looking at this at the showcase in Pen and Pad for a while now. Um, 
it is a mechanical pencil. They make fountain pens, ball pen, ball points, and mechanical pencils. But this was uh, the actual one in the display case that I was really looking at for a long time was the yellow one. When I had first seen these on display at Pen and Pad, what struck my eye is, well, they had a number of different colors, but what initially struck my eye was this yellow one because it has these uh, this tape measure, ruler, scale kind of markings along the body of the pencil. And I thought the just the color of it uh, and the shape of it and the ruling was so cool. But when I went to their website, I discovered something, that they had something even better. And that is brass. They have a brass bodied pencil. This is a mechanical pencil and this is 0.9 millimeter lead. So let's start first of all along the body of the pencil. This is really heavy brass and you have different scales. There's a, an inch scale and there is a 1 one meter scale and a 1 two hundredth meter scale and then there's a 1 three hundredth meter scale for looking at uh, measuring blueprints and whatever. And then you'll notice on the back of the pencil there is a stylus for operating a tablet or touch screen and if you twist off the barrel of the stylus you have a screwdriver bit, a tiny little flat blade and then if you pull it out and flip it around you have a Phillips screwdriver tip so this thing can act like a tool, like a screwdriver tool and then when you twist, the, so the front of the pencil has this beautiful knurling along the front of it where you would hold it and on this knurling uh, you twist the knurling like that and to advance the lead. Isn't that cool? And this is 0.9 millimeter lead. Now when you pull on to the knurling you can pull out the entire pencil mechanism and this is the pencil mechanism. On the back is an eraser with refill cartridges then you can pull out the eraser holder and inside is storage for several more leads. So you have lead storage, a built-in eraser, and this beautiful heavy brass bodied mechanical pencil. You know for a lot of years I've loved using mechanical pencils and I think years ago or decades ago I started out with the 0.5 millimeter lead pencils and I liked them at the time because they were very sharp, made a very fine line. But I also noticed that they were prone to breakage because the, pen, the, the leads were so thin and I tended to uh, press rather hard. And so later on I discovered 0.7 millimeter leads were almost as sharp, made a very fine line, uh, but didn't break nearly as much. And so for a long time now I've been using uh, inexpensive but high quality mechanical pencils such as this here, Pentel. Uh, this is the P207, the classic P207 with the push button uh, advancing on the, on the pencil there. In contrast, the leads of the .9 are noticeably bigger, noticeably fatter, but surprisingly enough, they, it, it stays really reasonably sharp when you're writing. I don't really notice the, the, the pencil line getting really too dull, and it is so much thicker, I mean, two tenths of a of a millimeter, a fifth of a millimeter wouldn't sound like all that much, but it really, you can really press and draw and it's a really rugged lead. Uh, there's just no worry about it. Um, it makes a great line. Let me show you. Well, to start off with, this is the 0.7 millimeter Pentel and uh, it's a pretty fine line. You know, looking at it, I don't know why I ever thought 0.7s would be that fat of a line because this is pretty pretty sharp of a line. And now the 0.9. You know one thing I really love about this pencil is the weight of it. Uh, it's just really massive and it gives you a sense of weightiness to the to the thing. What's interesting about it is you can get this kind of thin and then fat kind of a line. 
uh, by how you rotate the edge of the pencil. If you keep it um, on the same part of it, you can kind of get a little bit thicker pencil line, and then when you rotate it to a, the other side of the edge, it becomes thinner again. So you have the ability to kind of modulate the line uh, with this, this thicker lead that you can't really do on a thinner mechanical pencil lead. And, uh, but I really like the look of it because, for instance, this, this little box right here, it just has the look of almost as if it was written, drawn with a sharp wood case pencil. It has that kind of thick and thin look, very slightly variable, gets a little wide, a little thin, but it's never too dull. It's never too fat. Uh, it just feels great. And as far as the action of the pen compared to the Pentel, of course, these are classic, these P207s, but it is a push button. You have to push, 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 push. Um, in contrast, this one, you just twist it. You can twist it back to... Uh, collapse the pencil lead back into the barrel or you twist it forward the other way to extend the pencil lead and it's it's just really a great system I like that threaded system uh, it is really really cool and of course I went and bought went to my office supply store and bought a big pack of 0.9 millimeter Pentel leads in, uh, in order to uh, supply this thing and what's cool about the Pentel leads of course is that the color of the cap of the canister is coded to the size of lead. The yellows are always 0.9 millimeters. Now certainly if you um, are using inexpensive number two wood case pencils and doing a lot of writing and running your hands over them you can get the old school kids graphite lead uh, stains on the back of your hand but you know, ballpoint pens uh, do that too. Uh, we have, here's, I'm trying to get a picture of this. I was just scribbling with a ballpoint pen earlier today and I got little dots of ink all over my finger from just touching the paper where the ink made little heavy lines. But I just find a mechanical pencil line that seems to be, it doesn't smear as bad, at least on this kind of paper. And this uh, HB kind of lead seems to be really good. You know, the cool thing about uh, this mechanical pencil is it's not just for sketching and drawing out ideas and stuff, but I really like uh, scribbling uh, handwritten notes with it. Um, these were notes for one of the Abacus videos I, was, uh, I did uh, last week or so. And uh, I like writing with them, uh, printing, if you will, scribbling with them. Uh, they're very cool devices uh, for writing. I find... Uh, I find it very easy to, to write uh, with, with mechanical pencils. You know, there's a philosophy surrounding these kinds of devices like mechanical pencils with simple lead refills uh, and fountain pens that use bottled ink, for instance, that I really love, and that is it's sort of a minimal amount of waste. It's not like cartridge razor blades where you're throwing the razor blades all, all this plastic and metal out I prefer safety razors uh, they uh, are inexpensive work grade and uh, they're just less wasteful um, you know you you think of the marketing aspect of uh, printer ink cartridges where the cartridges are more expensive than the printer for instance with inexpensive printers or ballpoint pen refills that are expensive or at least uh, have a lot of natural resources that are wasted when you throw them away. In contrast to that, I really love the idea of not having wood case pencils. I mean, I have a fondness for wood case pencils going back to my childhood, but I really love the idea that you're not wasting wood with these pencils. You have a solidly built brass uh, mechanism here that should last for literally generations and all you have to do is feed it these little leads uh, whenever they need it and it, it seems like so much more elegant of a system than grinding away a, a wood casing around a pencil lead like you do with, pen, with lead wood case pencils for instance. So this is a really great tool and I hope to get a lot of use out of it. Um, I am surprised somewhat over the years that my mechanical pencil journey has taken me from smaller sized leads up to bigger sized leads. Um, but 
I, I really think part of it in this case has to do with the fact that the weight of the pen, the pencil body, um, its heaviness, its uh, the size of it, uh, the diameter of it, has a lot to do with the aesthetics of the of the bigger lead. Um, it all kind of works together into a really beefy, solid writing tool. Or at least that's how I'm justifying it to myself this week. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve, and these are Confessions of an Office Supply Junkie.